Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about solving quadratic equations with square roots. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. We're given this problem right here, k squared equals 76, and we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. So we have our variable k by itself. Well, it's squared, but it's by itself here. So this is actually a fairly simple problem. We see the k and the squared, so the opposite of squared is taking the square root. So if we take the square root of both sides here, we're left with k by itself equals plus or minus whatever the square root of 76 is. Square root of 76, so k equals plus or minus, the square root of 76 is 8.718, and that's rounded. So it's approximately. So plus or minus, we can write that as k is approximately positive 8.718 and a negative 8.718. And there we have our answer. We're given this problem here, k squared equals 16, and we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. Luckily, k is by itself already, so this is actually fairly easy. The first thing I need to do is, well, I have my k squared equals 16. I need to take the square root of both sides. What does that leave me? Well, square root of k squared leaves me with just a variable k, so I cancel that out, and then the square root of 16. What's the square root of 16? It's 4, right? But we're not just done. We have to write plus or minus 4. So positive or negative 4 both would have fit for k there. So we can write it like this if you want k equals 4 and negative 4. But there we actually have our final answer. k is equal to 4 and negative 4. We're given this problem here. x squared equals 21 and we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. Our x variable is already by itself so it's being squared. Opposite of that is the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. That cancels out the x squared, leaving me x by itself. Square root of 21, though, becomes the decimal, which is 4.583, and that is approximate. But I'm not done. When we take the square root, we have to make this as plus or minus. There's two options there. There's two options for x that, when plugged in, will give us 21 from our original equation. And that x is approximately, well, we can write it like this, 4.583 and negative 4.583, and that's rounded. So there we have our final answer. x equals a positive 4.583 and a negative 4.583. We're given this problem right here, a squared equals 4, and we want to solve this by taking the square root. Well, luckily our variable a is already pretty much by itself. It's just squared. So to eliminate that square, I need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. That eliminates the squared value for the a, so a is now by itself, and the square root of 4 is 2. But when we take the square root over an equal sign here, or take the square root of both sides, we have to write that as plus or minus. So that, excuse me, that plus or minus is really saying a is equal to a positive 2 and a negative 2. And those are our two options that work for a and our final answer. We're given this problem right here, x squared plus 8 equals 28, and we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. We first have to get x squared by itself, so to do that, I have to subtract an 8 to both sides. That leaves me with, well, 28 minus 8 is 20, and we have an x squared here. So now we have x squared equals 20, we need to take the square root of both sides to get x completely by itself. The, x, the square root cancels out the square, so x is now by itself, and the square root of 20 is the decimal, 4.472, and I always do that, it's approximate, because it's rounded. But be careful, we also have to do the plus and minus here. Our x value is both the positive and negative of 4.472. So if we want to see it like this, we can say x is approximately 4.472, again, because I rounded, and then negative 4.472. And there we have our final answer. We're given this problem right here. 2n squared equals a negative 144, and we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. Well, I see 2 times n squared, and I want to get n by itself. 
So to do that, I have to divide first 2 to both sides. That gives me n squared here by itself. And negative 144 divided by 2 is a negative 72. So where do we go from here? Well, we have n squared. So to get rid of that n squared, we have to take the square root of both sides. So we're now left with n equals, well, wait a minute, the square root of a negative number, we can't do that. That's imaginary. And so in this case, we're actually stuck. And what is this? Well, this is really a no solution. There is no solution for n that works. No solution that we can plug in for n that makes this equation true. That's real. So no solution is our final answer. We're given our problem here. Negative 6m squared equals a negative 414. And we want to solve this by taking the square root. Well, first thing I need to do is get m squared by itself. It's being multiplied by a negative 6. So if I divide negative 6 to both sides, the negative 6 is cancel, and we have m squared now by itself. Negative 414 divided by negative 6 is a positive 69. Remember, negative divided by negative is a positive. So now we have m squared equals 69. Well, to get rid of the squared, I have to take the square root of both sides here. That cancels out the squared, leaving me m by itself, and this is actually going to be approximately, okay. And the square root of 69 rounded is an 8.307 here. Now, it's rounded, so that's why I have an approximate, but we're not done. When we take the square root over the equal sign, it has to be a plus and minus. A negative and positive 8.307 is an approximate solution here. So we can write it like this if you want. 8.307 and a negative 8.307. But those two numbers for n are our final answer. We're given our problem right here. 7x squared equals a negative 21. And we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. First thing I see is there's a 7 times x squared. To get rid of that, I have to divide both sides by 7. These 7s are eliminated, eliminated, and we have x squared now by itself. Well, negative 21 divided by 7 is a negative 3. So now we have squared x squared. We're going to take the square root of both sides to eliminate that squared value. So x is now by itself. And so what's the square root of negative 3? Well, can we take the square root of a negative number? No, we can't. So square root of negative 3 doesn't really exist. It's an imaginary number. So in this case, we have no solution as our final answer, meaning there's no value for x that can be plugged in to make this equation true. So again, final answer, no solution. We're given this problem right here. m squared plus 7 equals 88. And we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. First thing I want to do is I'm going to subtract a 7 to both sides. That eliminates a 7 on the left, giving me m squared, and 88 minus 7 is an 81. Well, now we have m squared equals 81. To get rid of that squared value, we need to take the square root of both sides. Square root here, square root there. So now we're left with m by itself equals the square root of 81. Well, square root a to 1 is a 9, and since we're taking the square root over the equal sign, that's plus and minus. So m equals plus or minus 9, and that's really our final answer. We can write it like this, a positive 9 and a negative 9, and if we plug both of those into our original equation, we would see that this equation is true, and it worked. So again, final answer, m is 9 and a negative 9. We're given this problem here negative 5x squared equals a negative 500, and we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. Well, first I have to get x squared by itself. So to do that, I have to divide both sides by a negative 5. Negative 5 cancels out, leaving us with an x squared. Negative 500 divided by negative 5, remember negative divided by a negative is a positive, and so we have positive 100 here. All right, so we have x squared equals 100. Where do we go from here? Well, I want to take the square root of both sides. Opposite of x squared, or just take a square to the square root. That eliminates the x here. Now, the square root of 100, hopefully you know that, that's 10. But since we're taking it over the equal sign, we can't forget the plus and minus here. So we have x equals plus or minus 10. Now, that plus or minus 10 here 
I can do the same thing as saying x equals a positive 10 and a negative 10. So 10 and negative 10 are the two solutions that work for our equation. So again, our final answer here is x equals 10 and a negative 10. We're given this problem right here. Negative 7n squared equals a negative 400, uh, 448. And we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. Well, I see negative 7 times n squared, and I need to get n squared by itself. So I divide both sides by negative 7. That leaves us here with n squared completely by itself equal to, well, what's negative 448 divided by negative 7? That's a positive 64. Negative divided by negative is a positive. I don't know that off the top of my head, but we can figure it out. So n squared equals 64. Well, opposite of squared is square root. So I take the square root of both sides, leave me with n by itself completely here, and then the square root of 64 is, well, 8. But we can't forget the plus and minus. We take the square root of both sides, we need to make sure we have a plus or minus the value there. So that's the same thing as saying n equals a positive 8 and negative 8. Those two solutions, when plugged back into our original equation, would make it true. So again, our final answer here is n equals 8 and a negative 8. We're given this problem right here. Negative 2k squared equals a negative 162. And we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. First thing I need to do is divide, well, both sides by negative 2. k squared is being multiplied by negative 2. And by dividing both sides by negative 2, I'll eliminate that negative 2, giving me k squared by itself on the left. On the right, we have negative 162 divided by negative 2. Now remember, negative divided by a negative is a positive. So 162 divided by 2 is an 81. Well, now we have k squared equals 81. Take the square root of both sides, that eliminates the squared on the left, so we have k by itself. Square root of 81 is just 9. But be careful, when we take a square root over the equal sign, we have plus and minus here. So that meaning is, well, k is a positive 9 and a negative 9. Both of, the, both of those two values we can plug in for k, and our equation would be true and would work. So our final answer here is k equals positive 9 and a negative 9. We're given x squared minus 5 equals 73, and we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. Well, first thing, I want to get x squared by itself. So to do that, I have to add a 5 to both sides. That leaves us with x squared by itself here, and 73 plus 5 is a 78. All right, so now we have x squared by itself. To get rid of the square, we take the square root of both sides. That leaves us with x by itself, and square root of 78, well, square root of 78 comes out to be approximately, what is that, 8.832. But we took the square root over the equal sign, so that's a plus and minus. Meaning, x is approximately the positive value, 8.832, and the negative value, of negative 8.832. Both of those values, when plugged into x in our original equation here, would make this statement true. So again, our final answer is x equals approximately 8.832 and then negative 8.832. We're given this problem here, 16n squared equals 49, and we want to solve each equation by taking square roots. Well, we have 16 times n squared. Opposite of multiplication, division. Divide 16 to both sides, and that helps us bring n squared by itself. Well, what's 49 divided by 16? Well, it's a decimal. That's 3.0625. Don't worry, I didn't know that off the top of my head either. Now we have n squared equals 3.0625. If I take the square root of both sides, I'm left with n by itself. That's great. Now this is going to be approximate here, okay? So the square root of 3.0625 is approximately, oh no, it's exact. It's exact. That's what I get for thinking too fast. And equals 1.75 here. But it's a plus and minus. We take a square root over the equal sign, we have positive and negative here. So that means n can be a positive 1.75 or a negative 1.75. Both of those values will work for n. Let me plug it back in to make this equation true. So again, our final answer. N equals positive 1.75 and a negative 1.75. We're given this problem right here. 
n squared minus 5 equals a negative 4, and we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. First thing I'm going to do is add a 5 to both sides. And in doing so, by adding a 5 to both sides, I'm left with, well, n squared by itself, because these 5s cancel, and negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1. Well, this is kind of easy, but be careful. We have n squared equals 1 now. So we still need to take the square root of both sides to get rid of that squared value for the m. And the square root of 1 is 1. But we can't forget, this is probably where you're going to make a mistake. I don't want to assume it, but you might. A lot of students make this mistake. Square root over the equal sign, when we take that, that's going to be a plus or minus. Make sure we bring both of those there. So n is equal to a positive 1 and a negative 1. Both of those values, when plugged into our original equation, will make the solution true, or equation true. So again, our final answer is n equals positive 1 and a negative 1. We're given this problem right here, n squared plus 8 equals 80, and we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. We're going to subtract an 8 to both sides here. We have n squared uh, plus 8 here, opposite that sub uh, addition subtraction, so by subtracting 8 to both sides, that's cancel, n squared is by itself. 80 minus 8 is a 72. All right, now from there, well, opposite of square to square root. Square root both sides, leaving us with n by itself. What's the square root of 72? And it's going to be approximate, okay? Approximate. Approximately 8.485 is the square root of 72. But be careful, we're not done. Square root over the equal sign makes it plus and minus. So n is approximately positive 8.485 and a negative 8.485. Both of those answers, solutions, right, we plug back into our original equation and it will make it true. So again, final answer, n is approximately 8.485 and a negative 8.485. We're given this problem right here. 7v squared plus 1 equals 29. And we want to solve this equation by taking some square roots. First thing I need to do is get v by itself, or v squared. So to do that, I first subtract a 1 to both sides. That eliminates the 1, leaving me with a 7v squared on the left here. 29 minus 1 is, well, 28. So far, so good. 7 is being multiplied by v squared, so opposite that is division. Divide both sides by 7. v squared is now by itself, and 28 divided by 7 is 4. So now we just have to take the square root of both sides. That's the opposite of v being squared. v is now completely by itself, and square root of 4 is 2. But be careful, that's plus or minus 2. Square root over the equal sign makes it plus and a minus. So v is a positive 2 and negative 2. Those two values, when plugged into v in our original equation, will make this statement true. So v is equal to positive 2 and negative 2 is our final answer. We're given this problem here. 10n squared plus 2 equals 292, and we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. First thing I do is subtract a 2 to both sides. That helps me with my goal of getting n squared by itself. 2 minus 2 is 0. You don't need to write that. Bring down the 10n squared. Well, 292 minus 2 is a 290. All right, so 10 times n squared. Opposite of that is division. Divide 10 to both sides. 10's cancel, and we have n squared by itself. 290 divided by 10 is just, well, 29. So we have n squared equals 29 now. Well, what do we do from there? We need to take the square root of both sides. So taking the square root of both sides gets us n by itself. Now this is going to be approximately. Square root of 29 is 5.385. But be careful. Square root of 29 if we take it over the equal sign, we got plus and minus. So n is approximately positive and negative 5.385 here. That means that n is approximately a positive 5.385 and a negative 5.385. We take those two values. If we plug it in for n in our original equation, we would get a true solution. So again, our final answer, n is approximately, we have approximate symbol there, 5.385 and a negative 5.385. Five. We're given this problem right here. 2n squared plus 10 equals 210. And we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. First thing I want to do is, well, 
So I'm trying to get m squared by itself. I need to subtract a 10 to both sides. These 10s are eliminated, leaving with 2m squared here equals, well, 210 minus 10 is just 200. Not too bad. Well, 2 is being multiplied by m squared. Opposite of that is division. Divide both sides by 2. Now we have m squared by itself equals 200 divided by 2, which is 100. Okay, m squared equals 100. Where do we go? Opposite of squared is square root. Take the square root of both sides, hence this problem. m is by itself now, and then square root of 100 is 10. But be careful, plus and minus. Take a square root over an equal sign, we need the positive and the negative. So m equals a positive 10 and a negative 10, and both of those numbers, when plugged into our original equation, will make it true. So again, our final answer is m equals 10 and a negative 10. We're given this problem right here, n squared plus 10 equals 91, and we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. First step, I need to subtract a 10 to both sides. 10 and negative 10, or minus 10, cancel out. n squared, or sorry, 9n squared just comes down, and 91 minus 10 is a good old 81. All right, n's being multiplied by 9 squared, or n squared, 9's being multiplied by n squared, getting mixed up here. Opposite multiplication, division. Divide both sides by 9. The 9's cancel, leaving us with n squared by itself. And the square root of 81, again, is 9. Square root, of, uh, take a square root of now of both sides, so 81 divided by 9 is 9. Now we take a square root of both sides, leaving us n by itself equals, well, square root of 9 is 3. Well, it's a positive and negative 3. Remember, square root over the equal sign makes it a positive and negative, so n equals a positive 3 and a negative 3. So there's two values right there. When plugged into our original equation, make it true. So again, final answer, n is positive 3 and a negative 3. We're given this problem right here. 5n squared minus 7 equals 488. And we're going to solve this by taking some square roots. First thing I want to do is add a 7 to both sides. It's winking at me. This brings down the 5n squared. 7's cancel. And 488 plus 7 is 495. All right. Now we want to divide both sides by 5 because it's being multiplied by n. The 5's cancel, and now we have n squared by itself. 495 divided by 5 is a 99. All right. Now we want to take the square root of both sides. And please don't say 33. <laughs> and so n squared, square root of n squared is n, and this is going to be approximate, square root of 99. Well, square root of 99 is a 9.950, not 33. And if you were thinking 33, let me know down below. Well, that's also a positive and negative. Why? When we take the square root over an equal sign, we need to make sure there's a positive and negative on the right-hand side. So that's saying n is approximately a positive 9.950, and a negative 9.950. And so here we have our two values that work and make our solution true, our equation true when we plug it in. So again, our final answer, n is a positive 9.950 and a negative 9.950. We're given this problem here, 8n squared minus 6 equals 306. And we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. I first need to add a 6 to both sides. That eliminates the 6 here on the left, giving me 8n squared by itself on the left. 306 plus 6 is 312. Okay. Now we have 8n squared equals 3, oh, sorry, 312. Not 3, I said 312, we're not 319. It's 312. I can't add. If you caught that, let me know down below. But it's okay. We all make mistakes. But I caught it. So now, opposite of multiplication of division, I need to divide both sides by 8 here giving me n squared by itself on the left, and the right, 312 divided by 8 is a positive 39. So, n squared equals positive 39. We need to take the square root of both sides to get n by itself. Well, n here is approximately, square root of 39 is going to be approximate here, and that's a 6.245. But remember, square root over the equal side makes it a positive and a negative. So n is approximately positive 6.245 and a negative 6.245.
those two values when plugged into our original equation make it a true statement. So again, final answer, n is approximately 6.245 and a negative 6.245. We're given this problem right here, 10n squared minus 10 equals 470, and we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. I first want to add a 10 to both sides. That eliminates the 10 here, leaving me 10n squared on the left. And 470 plus 10 is 480. Well, from here, we need to divide both sides by 10. That's opposite of the multiplication that's going on. 10s cancel, n squared is now by itself. 480 divided by 10 is just good old 48. So now our goal of getting n squared completely by itself has happened. But where do we go from here? Opposite of squared is square root. Take the square root of both sides. n is by itself now, and it's going to be approximate here, approximately 6.928. But wait, there's more. Square root over the equal sign makes us a positive and a negative. So again, that's approximate rounded answer. So we can write it out like this, and it's approximately 6.928. And a negative 6.928. Both of those values, when plugged into our original equation, would make it true. So again, our final answer, n is approximately 6.928 and a negative 6.928. We're given this problem right here, 8n squared minus 4 equals 532, and we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. First thing I need to do here, well, is add a 4 to both sides. That helps me get one step closer to get n squared by itself. Force cancel here, and now I'm left with 8n squared equals 532 plus 4, 536. All right, well, 8 times n squared. Opposite of that is division. Divide both sides by 8. 8's cancel. I have n squared by itself here. 536 divided by 8 is a 67. Almost there. Opposite of squared is square root, square root both sides. N now is by itself, but this is an approximate answer because it's going to be rounded. And we have approximately 8.185. That's the square root of 67. But remember, square root over the equal sign makes it a positive and a negative. So N is approximately a positive 8.185 and a negative 8.185. Those two values, when plugged into our original equation, will make it a true statement. So again, our final answer, n is approximately 8.185 and a negative 8.185. We're given this problem right here. 4r squared plus 1 equals 325. And we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. Well, I want to get r squared by itself. First step in doing that, subtract a 1 to both sides. 1's cancel, and we have 4r squared right here. 325 minus 1 is a 324. Now we're multiplied by 4 here. Opposite multiplication, division. Divide both sides by 4. 4 is cancel, leaving with r squared by itself here. 424 divided by 4 is an 81. All right. Opposite of square to square root, so we square root both sides. r is now by itself, and the square root of 81 is 9. But we took a square root over the equal sign, positive and negative. So r equals a positive 9 and a negative 9, and both of those two values, when plugged into our original equation, will make it true. So again, final answer, r equals 9 and negative 9. We're given this problem right here, 8b squared minus 7 equals 193. We want to solve this equation by taking square roots. Well, I want to get b squared by itself. So first step in doing that is adding a 7 to both sides. These 7s cancel each other out. And we have 8b squared left on the left. <laughs> 193 plus 7 is 200 here. So now we have 8 times b squared. Opposite of multiplication, division. Divide both sides by 8. 8s cancel. b squared is right here. And 200 divided by 8 is good old 25. All right, now we have b squared. Get rid of that, we take the square root of both sides. b is now by itself, and the square root of 25 is good old 5. But, again, square root over the equal sign, we do plus and minus. So b equals a positive 5 and a negative 5 here. 
meaning both of those two values when plugged into our original equation makes it true. So again, final answer, b equals positive 5 and a negative 5. We're given our problem here, 2k squared minus 2 equals 144, and we want to solve this equation by taking the square root. I want to get k squared by itself. First thing to do here is add a 2 to both sides. What does that do? Well, 2's cancel here, leaving me with 2k squared on the left by itself, and 144 plus 2 is 146. All right, so now we have 2 times k squared. Opposite of multiplication, division, divide 2 both sides. 2's cancel, and we're left with a k squared on the left here, but on the right, 146 divided by 2 is 73. So now k squared equals 73. Opposite of squared is square root, so let's do that to both sides. K now is approximately, because it's going to be rounded, approximately square root of 73 is 8.544. But the square root was over the equal sign, so that's a positive and a negative value. So K is approximately a positive 8.544 and a negative 8.544. And those two values, when plugged into our original equation, will make it true. So again, final answer, k is approximately 8.544 and a negative 8.544. We're given this problem right here. 3 minus 4x squared equals a negative 85, and we want to solve this equation by taking square roots. First thing I want to do is, well, subtract a 3 to both sides. That helps me get x squared by itself. The 3's cancel on the left, and we have minus 4x squared here on the left. Negative 85 minus 3 is a negative 88. Now, negative 4 is being multiplied by x. Opposite of multiplication, division. Divide both sides by a negative 4. These cancel, giving me x squared by itself is equal to negative divided by a negative is a positive. So 88 divided by 4 is 22. Now, we get rid of the square. Square root, both sides. x is completely by itself here. And the square root of 22, well, that's going to be an approximate answer. I can write an approximate symbol. There we go. Square root of 22 is approximately 4.690 for around the three decimal places. But I can put that there, so I round it. But when we take a square root over equal sign, we need to do a positive and negative. So x is approximately a positive 4.690 and a negative 4.690. Plug both of those back into our original equation, and it would make it true. So again, our final answer here, rounded x is approximately positive 4.690 and a negative 4.690. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com